In this example, we're going to talk about the multiple different ways that we can represent a Cartesian point in polar coordinates by doing the following. We're going to represent the Cartesian point, or rectangular point, 4, negative 4, as a polar point using each of these qualifiers. A positive r with a positive theta, a negative r with a positive theta, a positive r with a negative theta, and a negative r with a negative theta. So first thing I'm going to do is sketch my Cartesian point. So we're going to go four units in the positive x direction and four units in the negative y direction. This point would be four negative four. Now in polar coordinates we would be connecting directly to this point from the pole. The two things that we're interested in calculating are the value of r as well as the direction of theta. So if we were to extend this out, we'll refer to this direction as theta. Now in this direction, we're also assuming that r is a positive value, that we have moved in this direction. That means that the associated negative direction would be this direction, which is a half revolution away from our positive r direction. <clears throat> so with that in mind, I'm aware of a couple things at this point that x is equal to 4 and that y is equal to negative 4. Now with those two quantities in mind I'm going to start by finding the value of r using the following conversion. r squared is going to be equal to x squared plus y squared. So with that in mind that gives us that r squared is equal to 4 squared plus negative 4 squared. That simplifies to 32 which lets us know that r is going to be equal to plus or minus square root of 32, which simplifies into 4 square roots of 2. So going in this direction into quadrant 4, we'd be using r is equal to positive 4 square roots of 2, and in the quadrant 2 direction, that would be making use of negative 4 square roots of 2. So in the event that I want to represent this using a positive r value, I'm going to be using 4 square roots of 2 for this. I don't know why I keep trying to put a comma there. In the event that I want to use a negative value for r, that'll be negative 4 square roots of 2. Now another handy bit of information to know would be what are the sine and cosine of this angle. Now with that in mind, we know that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta. We also know that x is 4. And that in that direction, r is equal to 4 square roots of 2. Dividing both sides by 4 square roots of 2, that lets me know that the cosine of theta is equal to 1 over the square root of 2, or if we rationalize the denominator, root 2 over 2. <clears throat> if we do the same thing for y, and let y be equal to r times the sine of theta. That means that negative 4 would be equal to 4 square roots of 2 times the sine of theta. That lets me know that the sine of theta would be equal to negative 1 over the square root of 2, or if we rationalize the denominator, negative root 2 over 2. Now that means that the corresponding angle that we're going to be looking for is associated on the unit circle with positive root 2 over 2 comma negative root 2 over 2. Now within the first full revolution of the unit circle that is going to be equal to 7 pi over 4. Now that was assuming that the value of r that we had was positive. So only one of these representations is going to use that angle and that is going to be the first possibility. 7 pi over 4. So that 7 pi over 4 is representative of starting at the um, polar axis and rotating all the way around to this direction. The alternative would be to start at the polar axis and rotate in a negative direction. So a negative angle would be to take the 7 pi over 4 and subtract 2 pi from that result. 
So for the negative value, with r being positive, we can take 7 pi over 4 and subtract 2 pi to get a coterminal angle that is negative. Getting a common denominator for those will yield negative pi over 4. So for a positive r value with a negative theta, that would be negative pi over 4. <clears throat> now in the event that we want an r that is negative, we could take either of those two angles that we got and either add pi or subtract pi from the results to get us over to where we need to be. So for the other side of things, if I were to take the 7 pi over 4 and subtract a half rotation from it, that would get us over into quadrant 2 with a positive angle. That'll be 3 pi over 4, which does fall within the appropriate angle restriction of 0 to 2 pi. So 3 pi over 4. We could also have accomplished this by taking our negative pi over 4 and adding pi to it. That would have given us the same result. Now once we have this result, we can find an angle that is coterminal by subtracting 2 pi. So take 3 pi over 4, subtract 2 pi, and we'll have our negative angle associated with this. That'll be negative 5 pi over 4. So here we have four different representations for the same Cartesian point, all with different positives and negatives for our theta and r values.